All right. Hey there, everyone. This is Sam Black with Axery. So today's webinar, we're calling the Art of Technical Analysis. So to kind of get straight into it, um, what we're going to be covering in this webinar, which will take about, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes or so, we're going to be looking at uh, technical analysis. And the whole idea is to give you a usable way of using technical analysis without kind of going overboard on the details. As you can see over my screen here, there is uh, a chart. This is the one hour on the Euro USD. There's obviously sort of a lot of different data you could collect from a chart like this. So technical analysis is gonna be used to separate the signal from the noise. So with this chat, because it's just, or I'm sorry, with the webinar today, since it's just me in here, uh, we do have chat enabled, but it'll only be private messaging and Q&A. So if you have any questions, definitely answer them. Uh, hopefully at the end, I can stick around for a bit and get any of those questions answered. But if not, we are going to be doing a follow-up webinar to this one, where we cover any trades that were taken in this webinar, and we can also answer any questions that came up. So... Let's go ahead and jump into this now. Everyone should be able to see my screen. It looks like it's streaming fine on my end as well. All right, it looks like we've got some more people in now. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. So to give everyone an idea of what technical trading is, in case they don't know, uh, this is the definition I was able to find. And it's not a very good one, but it does sort of explain here, and we'll, we'll kind of simplify this as we go and get into more depth. So financial, and this is a technical or technical trading here. So financial analysis that uses patterns in market data to identify trends and make predictions. So that could mean a lot of different things. In our case today, we're mostly going to be looking at an indicator-based approach. Uh, we'll also touch on another, uh, a few other concepts as well. But this does include things like uh, candlestick analysis. So if you look on my chart here, uh, every candlestick has its own uh, sort of shape. Everything's got a high, a low, an open, and a close. Uh, there are people that do and analyze these candles sort of candle by candle based on where they are, and that is definitely one way to do technical analysis, but it, it's kind of difficult when you're first getting started. It is it is a good thing to know, but it's not always the best way to start. So we're going to look at uh, specifically the technical indicators and find different ways we can use those to look for trading opportunities. And just as everyone's aware, nothing here is going to be 100%. Uh, there are always going to be some losses in trading. Your money is at risk. So be wary of that and try to go back whenever you find a setup that you think might work or provide a trading opportunity and find other ones that look like it because it is a probabilities game at this point. So the more information you have, generally the better. If you know something works 50% of the time, you, you'll feel more comfortable using it as well. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, oh, and also at the end of this 45 minutes, I was playing around with these indicators earlier and I, there is a, uh, a bit of a system in combining some of these. So if you stick around to the end, I wanted to cover that with everyone. Uh, just to kind of give you a starting point. I'm not saying it's 100%. I haven't thoroughly back tested it myself, but it is something definitely to look out for. And if you're an Axery customer, you get one of the indicators uh, just for being a customer. It's one of the pri proprietary ones. It's called the strike indicator, which is one of the ones we're going to be covering today as well. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of start looking at the different indicators. So most of the time you're gonna be trading in MetaTrader, which is what we have open here. Uh, this is one of Axery's main platforms as well. Uh, pretty much everyone uses MetaTrader, which is good because a lot of technical indicators get developed for it. So you can go find a bunch of third-party ones, but with MetaTrader 4, there are a lot that are just provided. And you can find those up here. There's a little button, it's a little thing with a plus sign at the top that shows you where all your indicators are. And they're broken down actually pretty nicely into trend. So these are trend following indicators that kind of show you a general trend. You have oscillators, which generally will show up in a little window at the bottom of the screen here, and they go top to bottom. A lot of these are gonna show overbought, oversold states, meaning, um, the trend or the candlesticks you're looking at may turn around. 
but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can also show a trend. So an oscillator can show a trend sometimes. So don't feel like these two are mutually exclusive. And some trend indicators can also show uh, a reversion or a uh, turnaround in trend. And then you have volumes, which are pretty useful actually in Forex. There's a, there's a big myth that they're not because there isn't a centralized location for uh, volume information to come out of, whereas on like the New York Stock Exchange, there is only the set amount of volume and that's it. Uh, this will just kind of give you a slice of the overall volume that is happening on a candlestick. But uh, if it's happening in one place, it's probably happening everywhere. So volumes are actually a bit more reliable than, than people think they are. You have Bill Williams. Uh, Bill Williams was a specific... Uh, he was a technical analysis who came up with a bunch of pretty good uh, technical analysis tools here. They're mostly variations on things that have already existed uh, with the exception of like fractals and some other stuff, which we'll try to get into a little bit today. Uh, the gator oscillator was something I wanted to look at and the alligator as well, because it does help when you're looking at uh, something called market states, which we'll get into. Now, one of the first things we're going to look at, um, this is kind of like a classic, very old school uh, trend. Well, not trend. It's a, a mean reversion tool, and it's going to be found under oscillators. This is the relative strength index, which is this very top one for me, but only because I picked it. Most of the time, this is alphabetical. What will happen when you're looking at the relative strength index is uh, when you pick it, it's going to ask you what kind of settings you want. The default settings are 14. Uh, by default, it applies to the close. The minimum is zero, and the minimum or the maximum is 100. You'll have different levels in here as well, uh, the 30 and the 70, and I'll show you what those are right now. So you'll see here you have a 70 level and a 30 level. And the way this works is when this line, this blue line, just to keep it simple, uh, crosses over either the 70 or the 30, it means that there is a bit of a turnaround expected to happen. Now, this isn't always the case, and we'll cover why, but if you look right here, for instance, it became what we call oversold. Oversold just means the price went farther than it should for a given amount of time. Uh, and oversold doesn't always mean a turnaround, but it can a lot of the times. And as you can see here, we got a bit of a turnaround. It's not much, and honestly, the entry here would base would be based a lot on sort of your entry criteria, which you can use the RSI for good entries sometimes, but it's gonna it's best paired with another tool. And to give you some other examples of this working in the past, if we scroll back, looks like right here. It happened again, and this one was a little bit better. It, it reverted a little bit more or kind of reversed a bit a bit more. Over here, same idea. And this one's kind of interesting because it came off of a really low wick candle here, over here, and then you get sort of this mean reversion thing happening again. Uh, and keep in mind, we're on the one hour. So the one hour is kind of a good mid-range time frame. But if you go up to the daily, or let's say even the weekly, uh, the signals tend to be a little bit cleaner. There's uh, this problem with technical analysis called signals versus noise. Uh, and it's not always easy to tell which is which. So a signal is simply a signal being generated, in this case, crossing over the 30 or the 70. Uh, on higher time frames, there tends to be less noise, but there's also less signals. So here we almost got a cross, which you wouldn't really want to take because it didn't quite meet the criteria, but it did revert. Over here's a decent one. You can see here it crossed over, and then up here it got a pretty good reversion to it. Um, now this is just on the default settings of 14. If you shorten this a little bit, you'll get more signals, and if you lengthen it, you'll get less signals. So this is an example on the daily. Uh, if you go down to the one minute, just to give you an idea of what noise looks like, you can see here, it's kind of all over the place. This thing's very spiky, very jagged. And as it goes, it does generate some signals, but they're not great all the time. So we've got one here where it crosses over and some people do decide to take the entry when it crosses over. So let's say they entered on this candle. A lot of people decide to take it when it crosses back. 
So the cross back happens over here. And by the time it crosses back, in this case, there's not really any trend left in it, unless you were trying to capture all that by using a kind of big stop loss, which in that case, it's only four pips either way. So maybe that would work out. Uh, over here is another one. And as you can see, it just gets more and more jagged. It's, it's just a little bit crazy on these low time frames. So if you're going to use something like this, it's always a good idea. And this goes for every sort of technical indicator. Um, you could use it on a higher time frame, lower time frame. Higher time frame is good because it creates less signals and less noise. So if you're kind of casual about trading or don't have all day to look at a chart, higher time frame is probably going to be better for you. But if you are sitting there all day and you can... I guess sort of control yourself with it because of all the different signals that are generated. Maybe a lower time frame would make sense. That's something you'll definitely want to look at. Uh, and this is uh, going to be part of uh, the system I wanted to show you a bit later with some adjustment. And uh, all right, let's go ahead and move into the next indicator here. So to get rid of indicators on your chart, you can either hit Control I or right click on the chart and then click Indicator List. And then we're going to remove the relative strength index or the RSI as it's called. And we'll go ahead and close out of that. Now, the next one we wanted to look at is called the CCI or the channel commodity index. And I've used it recently, so it's going to show up under my recently used up here. And same thing pops up. Uh, you'll notice the apply to is actually the typical price instead of the close. But it does also have levels and they are negative 100 and 100. Now you'll look at this and uh, the first thing that'll probably pop in your mind if you've not seen these two before is it looks a lot like the RSI. Uh, what's different about the commodity channel index is it has a different sort of algorithm to develop these signals. So they will sometimes give similar signals, but let's say uh, the RSI, for instance, will give the signal first or the CCI can sometimes give the signal first. Uh, you can use these two in conjunction if you want, and we'll look at some examples of that as well. But uh, it, it's good to kind of learn these on their own. But as you can see, we're down here on the 15-minute chart. There are an awful lot of signals being generated. We've got one here. Now let's move that back one. We've got one here. I don't even want to mark all these off because there's so many. And we've got another one here. And another one here. Oh, and we have a little tiny one right about there. So it generates a lot of signals. And looking back, this seems pretty accurate. Um, this one here, if you wanted to take that entry, I mean, you might have actually ended up taking it one bar previous if you were just waiting for the crossover here. Oh, no, I guess you would have waited for this one. Uh, if you were waiting for this line to cross over, uh, you probably... It doesn't look like a bad trade. I mean, your stop loss to get in here would have to be five points and your take profit. You could have made 10. It's tricky to measure things this way sometimes because uh, there's no guarantee you would ever have gotten out at the exact top and when you would have gotten that reverse entry. Probably would have been more like there at the close of the bar. Um, but the CCI, again, is another tool like the RSI. It shows mostly mean reversion, uh, oversold and overbought conditions. Now, with this, you'll also want to figure out a good way to use entries. So let's see if there's anything happening right now in real time. So right now, actually, we just entered an overbought condition over here. Uh, so what we're expecting to happen is for this to come down. Now, if we were to actually enter in on that last bar, we might actually take a little trade here because we wanted some to review. Uh, you'd probably look at, I mean, we can trace back to the previous high here and look at where we wanted to put our stop. So I always like to do a couple points off of kind of a relatively recent high. I'm not going to go all the way back here because that's pretty far out for, you know, 30 pips for what it will probably be about a eight or nine pip uh, position here. So we're going to actually enter a position here. I don't have this enabled quite yet. So let's go to, we are on the, yep, that's putting me in the wrong one. Uh, maximum deviation. 
All right, I don't want to dwell too long on this, so we'll just figure that out later. So let's go ahead and drop this down to about here. This is probably where our exit would be, right down here, eight pips, and then our stop loss would be probably up here. So this is where we would expect it to go. And we'll actually just recolor the bar here so we can remember this when we do a look back on it. And I'll open up a new chart in the meantime. Anyway, uh, overall, this is the CCI. You can see it also in this zone over here had some overbought situations, which not all of them panned out. And this is something important to look at is in what situations are the trades actually working? So right here, uh, it didn't really come down at all. And your stop probably would have been uh, 10, 10 or so pips up. This one had a pretty good chance of stopping you out here uh, if you're trying to take the 10 pips. Now, if you held on through this, which isn't always recommended because it did generate more signals. So maybe you take it on the second or third signal here instead of just taking it right on the uh, first, or I guess what would be the second. So you take it over here and then you would have gotten those, those 10 points back with a relatively small stop loss. Bear in mind, smaller time frame, all that stuff. Now, if we go up to the daily, we can see over here, it's going to be a little bit more accurate. So if we waited for a cross back or at least for it to come back to this line and become a little bit less oversold or overbought, uh, our entry actually might have worked out there because we would have looked at the next closest one, moved it up a few pips, and then you can uh, see here it did it does come down. And this might be a trade you'd still currently be in if you took it somewhere over here. Uh, there is an interesting thing happening here, which we're going to cover called divergence, which is basically where you see here price is oh, wrong thing. I didn't need that one. I needed this one. As you can see, price is going up here, but the CCI is going down. This is what we would call divergence. And we're going to dig into that a little bit later because it makes for some really interesting uh, opening and uh kind of entry opportunities with these with these oscillators. All right, let's see what uh, which one we're going to handle next. Um, all right, cool. So we are going to get into actually yet another oscillator. And this one is called the Williams percent. And let's actually clean up my chart here a little bit. Get rid of all this stuff. Delete it all. And then we are going to go into indicator list, get rid of that one. And we're going to add what is called the Williams percent range. Um, and this might be confusing. You have Bill Williams here, who is a trader, and then you have the Williams percent range. Uh, not the same guy. I think Williams percent was actually Larry Williams, another pretty famous trader. Uh, and then Bill Williams is yet another pretty famous trader. So let's go into the Williams percent range. And as you can see, just like everything else, you have the ability to change the period. Uh, and just so you know, the period is what's considered the look back period. So it's counting the last 14 bars of action. And you can actually up that. And we're going to play around with that a little bit later so I can show you uh, what that looks like when you use smaller and larger. Anyway, so we have the Williams here. Uh, now, something to know about this one is it does have a negative 20 and a negative 80. But there's also this, which is optional, and it doesn't always load up when you add it. So sometimes you have to go into your own levels and add it. This is the negative 50. So again, the, the percent R here, uh, or the percent of range, looks like the RSI and it looks like the CCI. The difference with this one is it's actually more used for uh, trending analysis as well, which is to say, when something gets into this lower part here, below the 50 line, but not below the 80 line, it actually is going to signal that this is trending downward. And you can do similar analysis with the RSI and the CCI, but this one's kind of more purpose built for it. So in this range here, which roughly correlates to this up here, we would assume that we are in a downtrend. And pretty obviously, it's not making higher highs. It's kind of trying to close above these higher highs, but it, it is in a downtrend. I mean, you could argue it's been in a downtrend since over here. Uh, and as you can see, you've got some areas over here as well where price tends to stick around. 
uh, and then up at the top here, it kind of gets into these small uptrends. So that could be one of the things we iron out by picking up the, uh, the amount of periods we're looking at. Uh, now, when it does get into these other areas, uh, meaning below the 80 line here, let me go ahead and delete these. So if we're looking down here, below the 80 line, this would be considered an oversold zone, which roughly correlates to these bars here. Yeah, I think I got that good. So this zone is considered oversold, meaning price will probably want to come out of this zone. Now, something that should be mentioned about all these markets is, uh, or all these indicators rather, is there's something called the market state, which uh, doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Uh, what a market state is, it's when a market is going one of the ways it goes, which sounds silly, but it it's something you don't really think about when you're in here trading. And I'll show you what market state is and what some good examples of it are right now so you can see how to use these indicators a little bit better. So as you can see on the chart here, um, price does one of a couple of different things. It can go up, which it's doing pretty clearly in this area. It can go down, which it's doing pretty clearly right there, or sometimes it can go pretty sideways. And these happen obviously in smaller areas on each. So that is to say, this is pretty clearly going up, this is pretty clearly going down, pretty clearly going sideways. It's in a nice little box there. Uh, but within the going up and down and sideways, or with, I'm sorry, with it going sideways, it is going up and it is pretty clearly going down. So this is why things like time frame matter, uh, because on a daily, this is going sideways. But if I drilled into this on like an hourly, see if I can get back to it here. It's making higher highs, it's making lower lows, and then this area is maybe going sideways, just in there, which I'll throw another box on so I can illustrate this. That area is going sideways, then it moves higher, and then it goes sideways a little more, and then it goes lower, and then it goes sideways, and then it makes a big drop, and then it shoots up. So looking at all the time frames isn't always beneficial, just because you can get into this mess. Sometimes it's way too much information to take in. And this is partially why technical indicators help because it digests a lot of information for you and allows you to make better decisions. But when you're looking at something like this, you know, if you're looking at the daily and you're going, okay, I'm, I'm going sideways over here. I mean, you actually get back to where I am. Uh, you're going, okay, I'm going sideways over here. I know the percent range works well in a sideways market, meaning if I get like an oversold condition, like I do here, it's probably a good time to look at buying only when I'm in the sideways market state, right? But if you drill that into a 15 or the one hour, it can, it can add a little bit of confusion to the mix because then you are trying to drill in and going, okay, I know this works well in a sideways market, but when I'm on the one hour, it's going up and it's going down and it's doing all this stuff. So a good rule of thumb when it comes to technical analysis, don't try to analyze every time frame. Just stick to the one you're on and work with that one. Get good at the daily. You know, there's no shame in not being able to cherry to one minute chart. I can't trade a one minute chart. I've only ever met one person that does it successfully. Uh, and they do it well because they're, they're conscious of this market state thing. Um, no, actually that one's fine. Uh, so if you have a indicator that works well in a trending market, try to only use it in a trending market. If it only works well in consolidation sideways market, use it in a consolidated and sideways market. Nope, sorry about that. Phone dropped off the desk here. All right. So uh, a very easy way to kind of go back and look at uh, different trading opportunities is just to load up whatever indicator you're looking at. And it can be multiple indicators and that's totally fine. And then just go back through everything. And in our case, if we want to identify different market states, we can go, okay, this one's in a market state, throw a box around it. And then look how it interacts with the, with whatever indicator you have loaded up. So in this case, here's an overbought situation in a, what I would consider a sideways or consolidating market. And we get this good overbought indicator here. 
because it's showing over here is going to over the line. Uh, so if we were to enter on this, you know, that would be 150 points on the daily with only needing about 30 to 40 points of stop loss. So that looks like a good trade setup. Now they're obviously not all gonna work out like this and there is, and this is why we call technical analysis and art. There's a lot of gray area in what could be considered sideways or up. Whereas I might look at this and go, oh, this is sideways. You might go, well, actually it's a very slight uptrend. And then over here, like because of Levitkoff's folding rule, it's actually going up. And as you can see, it's going up and up. So the trick here is to not get caught with too many ideas because if I gave this chart to 400 different people that do technical analysis, I'm gonna end up with 400 different answers. Uh, it's a similar problem with like Elliott wave theory, which is another way to do technical analysis. It's just nobody agrees. If you give two people the same chart, there's a hundred different ways to look at it. Let me see if I have any questions I can answer right now in the chat before we keep moving here, because it's a lot of information and I wanna make sure it's, it's useful for everyone. Um, all right, cool. Nothing to get to right away. And then we will keep moving on. Um, bu -bu -bu. Oh, and just something to mention here. Uh, I know I kind of mentioned it earlier with uh, Bill Williams. Some of these are just kind of based on other indicators. So the percent R is also based on what's called the stochastic oscillator, which I believe is another one you can just find in here. Oscillator, yes, yeah, stochastics. Uh, these two are actually based on each other. The, uh, well, I should say the percent R is based on the stochastic. This one is way older than this one. Uh, but as you can see, sometimes they generate the same signals like they do in this case. And sometimes they don't. Whereas this one's generating a signal right there, this one's not. So maybe you might even favor the old stochastic oscillator versus the percent R. But again, it's just something to go back and sort of review. Let me go ahead and get rid of both of these here. And I wanna show you yet another type of indicator. Now this one's not gonna be an oscillator. Uh, I know, big surprise. Let me get rid of all these objects here because we don't really need them. Uh, and just in case anyone can't see it, we've been looking at the Euro USD this, this whole time. So the daily, the 15 minutes, it's all been the Euro USD. Now, if you've spent any time around technical analysis or trading at all, you've definitely run into this one. Uh, this one's considered a trend tool, but it can be a lot of other things. And this is called the moving average. The moving average just takes an average of the last X amount of periods. Again, everything seems to default to 14. Um, the reason for this is because that is, actually, I don't know if there's a good reason. It's not really a two week period because two weeks in trading is 10 days. So it's like, you know, two and a half weeks or two weeks, four days or something like that. So definitely feel free to play around with these. Some of the most popular settings for this are the 200. So when we use the moving average as a 200, it's actually considered a trend tool. People say if it's below the 200, you need to be selling. Whereas if it ever gets above the 200, which we'll look at it on, let's say the hourly, you need to be buying. And when you look back, it's actually not a terrible way to use it. Uh, it also acts as really good, uh, what we call support and resistance. Uh, support is simply where price is supported by a certain, and keep this in mind, it's a somewhat imaginary line, meaning when price hits it, it bounces off and resistance is when price does it on the other side, when it comes up to a line and it can't seem to break it. See, it can't seem to break it. And then eventually it does. And then uh, resistance tends to become support. As you can see later on, that's yet another way to look at some interesting trading opportunities. This again, though, is one of those things where if I give a hundred different people a chart, I'm gonna have a hundred different trend lines. Uh, and finding the key line is in art, is, is really what it is. People do very well with it but it takes a lot of practice. All right, let's keep going back here. So the next thing we're gonna look at is, as you can see over here in this area, the 200 moving average acts as support occasionally, but it's an interesting kind of support because it's not always a straight line. Uh, it's kind of like this moving line. And this seems to be pretty accurate. It's not saying every time that price comes down to the 200, it'll bounce off, but it did it twice here. 
And then over here, it finally broke through. And in this case, this is when we would be looking at selling. Um, so that's one way to use it as a trend indicator. People do use it actually as an entry indicator as well. So if you look right here on this bar, price crosses down below the 200 moving average. In this case, people sometimes just go short. I mean, you need a huge giant stop loss if you're doing this on the daily, but on the hourly, it's 600 or uh, sorry, not 600, uh, about 65 points. And you could make up that the 65 points in the matter of a few days over here. And if you could hold on for this, you're doing well. Um, so that that's yet another way to use the moving averages. People will also throw two moving averages on here, which works fairly well as well. Uh, another pretty important moving average is the 50. And this one, we're going to make a different color. So 50 is going to be blue. So people will sometimes wait for price to break the 50. And as you can see, 50 is doing a little bit better of a job as acting as support here uh, instead of the 200. And what people will often do is they'll wait for price to cross over or price to cross over, which happens over here in a couple different places. And then they'll wait for the moving average to cross. So they would get an entry of here. The benefit to this is it is a little bit more certain and it generates a probably a more probabilistic trading opportunity when this happens, meaning the chances of it keeping going are pretty good. Uh, the downside is because your entry is now over here, your stop loss has to be, you know, 100 pips instead of the 60 over here. That being said, the chances of this continuing, because as you can see here, if you just entered on this bar, that almost looks like it broke the 200. You'd have to deal with some of this, even though if you put your stop loss over here, you would have ended up catching it. Um, this crossover, which happens right here, is just a little bit more probabilistic. You can't see it because everything's blue. So in this area right here, that's got a better chance of continuing. But these are things to look back over the chart and see what works for you. I wouldn't really trust this on a one minute because things get messy on the one minute. Like here's a really good example of it all failing. Price comes back, it crosses over, and then it does come back again. So, I mean, net net, if you traded both those positions, you probably end up a few pips, but it's just a lot more messy down here. And this actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, but uh, there's more noise versus signal. Now, something that I think uh, should always be mentioned in technical analysis webinars, but never are, is going to be... We got time for everything here. I think we will because I wanted to get into that system here at the end. Uh, so we'll cover this next one, which is going to be called the average true range. Let's see, where did this guy go? Nope. Oscillators. Here we go. ATR. Now, the ATR or the average true range is an oscillator, but it works nothing like the. Um, the RSI, the CCI, or the percent Williams. Uh, this one actually just measures the amount of movement in the last X amount of bars. 14 is a pretty popular setting for this one, as with everything, for whatever reason that is. Uh, but as you can see here, the ATR is increasing, meaning there has been more movement in those bars. Uh, and this kind of seems silly because you can just look at the chart and see that as well. But when you're analyzing, let's say, this movement versus this movement, it's not always easy to see which one moved more. Uh, but you can look down at the ATR and go, oh, relative to the last 14 bars, this first movement was actually less than the second movement. Whereas if you look at this on the chart, you go, actually, this movement was bigger than this movement. So this is a good way to analyze what kind of market state you're in. And as you can see here, it all, it's kind of dropping off, right? So you could actually assume this is consolidation instead of a up or solid downtrend. And I'd say probably the, cons the consolidation ends about here, but maybe this is where your RSI works best on whatever setting you're using it on, or maybe it's where your uh, channel commodity index works best based on whatever setting you're using it on. So the ATR on the face of it looks very simple and 
like it's not very useful but as you as you grow as a trader and you start to use new tools the atr is actually probably one of the most important ones uh, i know it just shows movement but when things like this happen when you get these long periods of nothing happening and then you get like a sharp drop like you do over here and as you can see the atr down here starts to spike up that means you, you've got some movement. You're now probably out of the consolidation at this point and you're back into a trending market. Whereas over here, you're very clearly in a trending market of some sort. But as it drops off, it starts to consolidate. Anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the basic way to use that. And I do recommend you keep it on your charts if it's useful to you. Obviously, if none of this stuff helps, don't use any of it, find something that does. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of that. Uh, now let me show you the strike indicator. Uh, this is one of the Axery proprietary indicators. Uh, and this, kind of like the 200 moving average, is a trend indicator. So let's go ahead and, yeah, we want to zoom in. Let's go to the daily here. Uh, no, too messy. Let's go hourly. So the idea behind this one is when price flips from blue to red, you have a sell signal. So over here, you can see price goes from uh, red to blue, which means on this bar, oh, one more, one off, there we go, you would have a buy signal. This is probably one of the simplest indicators I've ever seen as far as detecting trend goes. Um, it's like on par with the 200 moving average, but the difference is it seems to be a little more accurate and quicker as well. So over here, this is a good example of it kind of trending up. And this is, again, something you might want to pair with the, um, with the ATR because you wouldn't necessarily want to use a trending indicator like this one in a, in a market where price is consolidating. And we know it's been consolidating for a while until we get roughly over to this point. And then you get another signal here and then it goes kind of crazy and then you know, basically just drop straight off a cliff. And here we even have a little bit of a signal to enter as well. We're late on it here, so we won't worry too much about that. Um, but as you can see down here, you'd look at probably a 20, eh, maybe about a 20 pip stop loss. And then up here, you can go for a one R, meaning uh, whatever your risk was times one of 20 points. So you'd be looking for it to get roughly up to here. Or if you're going for a two R, roughly up to here, meaning you're looking for 40 points to your 20 that you've risked. So this is how the strike indicator works. And I'm going to rush through this a little bit here because I want to show you uh, kind of an interesting system you can look at that uses that divergence concept we looked at. So let me get rid of, actually, I'll just keep it on there for now. And we're going to throw the oscillator back on here, but we're going to throw the relative strength index. And we're going to keep everything the same. And there's an interesting thing I wanted to point out that happens here, which is uh, divergence, which we looked at a little bit. I think that was on the CCI just a couple minutes ago. But we're looking for things where the RSI is showing us something different than what's actually happening. So on this case, you can see that this line, and this isn't really even a good example. Well, it is, I guess, in some sense, but it's not the best one. And I'll show you some really good ones. Um, this line here, it's showing this as a bottom. See how that's kind of flat here? But then what's actually happening on the chart in the same time span, price is going down. So here is what we call a divergence. What's happening on the chart is not happening on the RSI. But what we would do is we would trust what's happening on the RSI. So at this point in the chart, we'd be looking and we'd be going, okay, we have trend probably going to try to reverse. And this is probably because this is just a trading opportunity. There's not really any guarantee here. But looking back over it, it's actually looked pretty good. Um, so trend is probably going to reverse. And we're just waiting for an entry signal. So our entry signal comes when we get this here. So this is where we would actually want to enter the trade because previous to that, we had a, a divergence. This was showing a flat situation 
meaning price was not dying off as quickly as before. But over here, it looks like it's moving. So the rule is here, you trust what the RSI says. And this is just one example, but I did mark up a chart with uh, some different examples over here. So as we scroll back, you can see them. And this is a good example of divergence right here. So you can see price is moving downward on the RSI, but on the chart, it's making higher highs. So in this situation, what you would do is you would wait for an entry, which we get here. No, oh, that is the wrong one. I needed the vertical. Here we go. So we get an entry here once price flips over. And this actually offers a pretty good risk or risk reward. Uh, it's about 40 points here, and you can make up that 40 points. Uh, you probably will never get the bottom of a trade, but it turns out to be about you know 54 or something like that. So if you went to a one-to-one -one risk re uh, risk reward ratio, you'd get that there. Scrolling back, here is yet another one. And uh, just to clarify here, so everyone knows which indicators I have up, uh, this is the Axery Strike Indicator. And then this here is the RSI set to a 14 period, it's still to the close. So default settings on, on both of these. Uh, you can go into the Strike Indicator and change it to a, a higher period if you want to kind of weed out some of these signals here. Um, and you can do the same to the RSI. Definitely play around with this one because I'm interested in it personally as well. Um, so yeah, strike indicator, RSI. But anyway, here is another good example of divergence. Price is clearly making a lower low here with the wicks on everything. But over here, it's making higher highs. So what do we do? We wait for price to turn around. Here we're, we're in a downtrend because this is red. So we're waiting for a blue. And this is a good example of it failed once over here. I mean, you'd be looking at about an 11 point stop out. You get stopped out on this bar right here. And then you get another entry signal right here. And this one you don't get stopped out on. You're looking for about a 30 point risk because you're going below the nearest relative low. And you get that about here. Yeah, 30 points right about there. So that's a good one-to-one -one risk. You did lose one, but then you made up for it on the next one. Scrolling back, here is another divergence on the relative strength index. So this one's a little bit cleaner, it looks like. We're looking for a 15 point stop out, and then we make up those 15 points by right here on this bar, Yeah, right there. So that's an easy one-to-one. -one. So, so far it looks like if we, had we traded any of this, it would have been two, what is that? Three winners, one loser so far. And we got at least one more here. So this one I didn't mark off uh, up here because I wanted to show you how you do this. So this one is a divergence bottom. Price is trending up, but over here, it's trending down. So what you do is you would wait. Now, this one had a, a little kind of mid failure here. So you'd want to go long on this bar and then you'd lose it on that one with the 20 points. But then when you come back over here, this one is a 10 point and you would make the 10 points up to there. This is on a one hour chart, by the way. So it's not like you're waiting days for this to play out. I haven't really played around with this on a daily chart, but uh, definitely, definitely something to look at. And I'll, uh, if anyone needs it. Oh, this one I marked off specifically because it was a loser. Uh, which I wanted to show you. So here price is gently sort of trending up, but here it is trending down. So this is a good example of it failing. So you'd get in here with a 20 point stop out and it looks like the farthest it ever made it down was about 10. But then over here, you'd get stopped out on that 20 points. But there's something interesting happening here. If you extend this line out, See how that's trending up a little bit more aggressively, but then here it's still actually trending down and it's almost flat. So if you were to take the second signal, it's a little bit better of a trade. You have a 25 pip stop out and you make it, you have to wait a little while for it, but it comes back to you over here. So this is just kind of an example of that system. I recommend you go back and kind of mark up charts with these lines. Um, this is kind of a meta, trader hack that I'll throw in. Most of the time when you use this line tool, the trend line, it just creates an endless line. Uh, to fix that, you wanna click on the 
uh, line itself, go into trend line properties, and there's a little button here that says Ray. If you uncheck Ray, it'll make it into a line that's only a certain length here for you, which can be helpful when you're doing this. That way your chart it isn't just endlessly covered in lines. Um, all right, that's that's mostly everything we wanted to cover here today. Uh, it's kind of information dense, and I hope a lot of it was useful. I tried to kind of keep it as simple as possible here. Uh, what we're going to be doing in the next uh, in the next webinar is we're going to be answering any questions that had come up from this one that weren't answered yet, as well as reviewing any of these trade entries and kind of how they would have played out going forward. Personally, I'm really interested in this system to kind of see how it goes uh, going forward. So that'll be a fun one to look at. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions right now, I've got a few minutes to stick around and answer them. So definitely ask them in the chat. I believe you have to private chat me or use the Q&A setting in your little chat window there. Just let me know what works for you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Actually, I'll keep it up for a couple more minutes in case there is a question I can answer. But ask away any questions. Uh, thank you for, for coming to the webinar. Definitely come to the, uh, the next one if you can. Bring a friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me know what you guys need.